Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. A small Midwestern town lying asleep in the moonlight of midnight. Could anything be more familiar, more peaceful, more safe? Certainly not. Unless Ray Bradbury is writing about it. For his is a typewriter of terror. And once again, it has pounded out a tale not only calculated to keep you in suspense, but likely to cost you a night or two of sleep. Listen. Listen, then, as Miss Agnes Moorhead stars in The Whole Town Sleeping, which begins in just a moment. How does our nation honor heroism? One way is to award the Soldier's Medal, a bronze octagon on which is displayed an eagle standing between two groups of stars. The medal is suspended from a blue ribbon with 13 narrow stripes in the center, seven white and... And a ravine. In the town, the sidewalks were still scorched. The stores were closing and the streets were turning dark. Screen doors whined their springs and banged. And there was the sound of Grandma Hanlon's hammock creaking across the street. On her solitary porch, Lavinia Ness, age 37, very straight and slim, sat waiting. Here I am, Lavinia. Lavinia turned. There was Francine at the bottom porch step, all in snow white. I won't be a minute, Francine. I just have to lock the door. All right. I do like your dress, dear. Why, thank you, Francine. You look so well in that color. I'm afraid I can never wear it. It makes me look sallow. Oh, no, it doesn't. I'm sure it doesn't. Of course, I've always loved you in white. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Mrs. Harlan. Good evening. Well, where are you ladies going all dressed up so pretty? To the movies, Mrs. Harlan. It's William Holden tonight. <laughs> You won't catch me out on a night like this. Not with the lonely one. Strangling women. Oh. Lock myself in with my gun. That's what I'm going to do. Well, I wouldn't worry, Mrs. Allen. Oh, you wouldn't, wouldn't you? Well, what about Eliza Ramsell? You think she's not worrying? i lock myself in with a gun. That's what you ladies should do. Oh, so silly. Silly old woman. Hasn't got anything better to do than scare herself with rumors and gossip. Now, just the same. Hattie McDowell was killed a month ago. And Roberta Ferry the month before. And now Eliza Ramsell disappeared. Eliza Ramsell walked off with a traveling salesman, if you ask me. But the others... Oh, thank old friends. They reached the edge of the ravine that cut the town in two. Stood there. Behind them were the lighted houses... Ahead, deepness, moistness, fireflies, and dark. The ravine had to be crossed to reach the movies. Deep and black as it cut through the hill. Then a creaking bridge to cross over the stream. And then 113 steps up the steep and brambled bank to the other side. The ladies stood there looking down. I just hate to think of you coming back alone tonight, Lavinia. Oh, boss. I do wish you didn't live on this side of town. Don't you get lonely living by yourself in that house? Oh, maids love to live alone. Come on, we'll take the shortcut. I'm afraid even in the dusk. The ravine scares oh, me. Oh, come on. Don't be so silly. I'll hold your hand. Lavinia, cool as mint ice cream, took her friend's arm and led her down the dark winding path into the cricket warmth and frog sound. And mosquito delicate silence. Let's run, Lavinia. Please. No, no, why should we? If Lavinia hadn't turned her head just then, she wouldn't have seen it. But she did turn her head, and it was there. Back among a clump of bushes, half hidden, but laid out as if she'd put herself there to enjoy the soft stars, lay Eliza Ramsell. Her face moon freckled, her eyes like white marble. Then Francine saw it, too. And the women stood on the path for a frozen second, not believing what they saw. <laughs> and then the police came and dotted their flashlights around the shadows of the ravine. And Lavinia held on tightly to the shuddering Francine. And 
The night grew toward 8.30. You didn't move her, lady? No, no, of course not. Oh, no, we didn't touch her. How could we? And you didn't hear anything unusual? No, no, nothing. It's, it's the, the lonely one, isn't it? The lonely one did it, didn't he? Oh, I couldn't say, ma'am. We knew, we knew. She was a friend of ours. I'm sorry, that's too bad. I'll have one of my men walk you across the ravine. Oh, that, that won't be necessary. Thank you very much. We'll be all right. Lavinia, come along, dear. I've never seen a dead person before. Come on. Come on, it's only a little after 8.30. We'll pick up Helen and get on to the show. The show? Lavinia, you don't know me. Of course I do. We've got to forget about this. There's no good brooding about it. Now, if we hurry, we won't miss too much of the first thing. You've never come. You're an hour late. Well, Helen, you see... Someone found Eliza Randall dead in the room. Oh. Oh, no. Who found her? Well, we don't know. How awful. Oh, I... I don't think we'd better go to the show tonight. Oh, of course we will. It's the last showing today, and I wouldn't miss William all over the world. Besides, the lonely one can't kill three ladies all at once, and... and... Anyway, it's too soon. The murders come a month separated. Come along, Helen. Well, all right. I- I'll get a sweater. Wait for me. Why didn't you tell her about us finding a lie? Well, why upset her? Coming up tomorrow. Tonight we're going to the show, so let's not talk about it anymore. Enough's enough. The ladies walked on Tom stopped at the drugstore, which was a few doors from the theater. Lavinia bought a quarter's worth of green mint chews, and the druggist dropped the mints into a sack with a silver shovel. You looked mighty cool this noon, Miss Lavinia, when you was in. So cool and nice, somebody asked after you. Oh? Man, sitting at the counter. He watched you walk out, and he says to me, Hey, who's that? Just like that, he says it. <laughs> Why, that's Lavinia Nebs, prettiest maiden lady in town, I says. Beautiful, so beautiful, he says. Where she lived. You didn't... You, you didn't give him her address. Well, now, I didn't give him the exact address. I said over on uh, Park Street, near the ravine. Hope you didn't mind. Well, that settles it. We're going straight home. That man asking for you, Lavinia. You're next. You want to be dead in that ravine? Oh, not. I'm not going to miss the movie. You two can do what you want. I'm going. In the end, they all went to the show. Lavinia was like that. Cool, self-possessed, and persuasive. And when they came out of the show, the streets were midnight clean and empty as they walked Francine home. Lavinia, Helen, uh, stay here with me tonight. It, it's late. Mrs. Murdoch has an extra room. No, thanks. I don't sleep well away from my own bed. Please, Lavinia, please. I promise I'll call you the very minute I get home. Will you? Yes. Will you really? Yes, I promise. Now, Helen, you make a promise to call you, too. I will. Good night. Good night. And please be careful. Now, I'll walk you home, Helen. <laughs> I don't suppose it's any use asking you to stay with me, Lavinia. There's no reason for me to. You've certainly acted strangely all evening. I'm just not afraid, that's all. And anyway, the lonely one wouldn't be around. Not now, with the police discovering Eliza's body and all. Oh, I I feel so guilty. I'll be drinking a cup of coffee just about the time you get to the ravine. Oh, that awful bridge in the dark. Oh, You will call us the minute you get home, won't you? I won't sleep a wink if you don't. I promise you I'll call. Now, good night. Good night. Lavinia Neps walked down the midnight street, down the late summer silence. She saw the houses with their dark windows, and far away 
she heard a dog barking. She thought to herself, In five minutes, I'll be safe home. In five minutes, I'll be phoning Francine and Helen. That's so silly. Like old hens. <laughs> old, I'm older than either of them. She heard the voice singing away among the trees as she walked a little faster. And then coming down the street toward her in the dimming moonlight was a man. Well, look who's here. Uh, what a time of night for you to be out, Miss Ned. Officer Kennedy. Oh, I'm so glad it's you. Anything wrong, Miss Ned? No, no, nothing at all. I'm just glad it's you. You know, you shouldn't be out so late. Yes, I know. I've been to the movies. The late show. Well, I'd better see you across the ravine. No, no. Thank you. I can make it fine. Well, he's going to be behind the trees. It'll be pretty dark. Well, I'm not afraid of the dark, Mr. Kennedy. Are you sure you'll be all right? Yes, yes, quite sure. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll wait here till you're across. If you need help, just give a yell and I'll come running. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Nibs. As Lavinia walked off, she thought... I won't walk in the ravine with any man. How do I know who the lonely man is? Could be anyone. Then the ravine. She stood at the top of the 113 steps that led down the steep brambled bank and across the creaking bridge. Then a hundred yards and up through the black shadows to Park Street and home. Three minutes from now, I'll be putting my key in the house door. Nothing can happen. Nothing. And she started down the dark black steps into the deep ravine night, counting as she went. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, 
Mr. Kirsty? Is that you? <laughs> the crickets were suddenly still. The crickets were listening. The night was listening to her. Then there was a sound. Only a woodchuck surely beating a hollow log. No, no, it was Lavinia Nebs. It was most surely the heart of Lavinia Nebs. And she went down the steps faster, faster, running now, down the steps, plunging faster and faster, down, down into the pit of the ravine. Oh, no, wait. Cross the bridge. No, 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 no. You can see him. You'll not be able to move. He just run. Up the path between the hills, the top of the path, the street. And even with the light, the fear swirled about her, closing in, pressing. Please. Give me time to get inside of the door. And I'll be safe. Oh, my I'm safe at home. I'm safe. I'm safe. Oh. I'll never go out again. Oh, it's so good. It's so safe inside. I'm locked and safe inside. I... Wait, the window. There's no one there at all. There's nobody. There was no one following me at all. Nobody running after me. How silly. If a man had been following me, he'd have caught me. I can't run as fast as a man. I, I wasn't running from anything ex except me. <laughs> the ravine was safer than safe. Oh. Oh, it's, oh, it's nice to be home, though. Home's a really good, warm, safe place. The only... She had just put her hand out to the light switch when she heard it behind her in the blackness. Just a movement. <laughs> CBS Radio Network.